Now that we've talked about all these key features, we want to finally put this all together and graph polynomial functions. A way to help make nice graphs of polynomials is to look at the factored form of that polynomial. A lot of times we may get it in standard form and we have to do the factoring, but we're going to start out with it already in factored form. We can find the y-intercept by evaluating f of 0. We can also find the zeros or the roots and their multiplicities. The multiplicities will impact the shape of that polynomial, what's going on at that root. We can determine the end behavior. Now to do that, we would need to know what is the degree, what is the leading coefficient, all those different things, or those two different things, and those come from that leading term. This may or may not be in standard form, so we would need to kind of just consider what would that be if it's in standard form. Then we can make a rough sketch. This is not going to be a perfect sketch, but we'll be using the clues and give us a general idea of the shape. We can also plot other points as necessary to make it more accurate. So we've got two graphs here. We're going to start with this first one. That's 1 over 147. So we have this really small vertical shrink times x minus 1 cubed, x minus 7 squared, x plus 3. Let's first find the roots. Since it's already in factored form, I've got a factor of x minus 1. If I set x minus 1 equal to 0, we get x equals 1. It is multiplicity 3 because it's x minus 1 cubed. We have x minus 7 equals 0. So x equals 7 multiplicity 2. And x plus 3 equals 0. is just multiplicity 1 because there's no exponent on that factor. So we have the roots and we have the multiplicities. We can also think about the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the value of y when x is 0. So if I plug in 0, I can use my calculator to actually calculate this if we need to. And I don't feel like doing that in my head, so I'm also going to use my calculator. We've got 1 over 147 times 0 minus 1 to the third power, 0 minus 7 squared, and 0 plus 3. That ends up being negative 1, which tells me that the y-intercept is 0, negative 1. The end behavior of this is made up of that leading term. And this is not in standard form, so we'll have to kind of multiply it out in our heads a little bit to think about it. And one way to do that is to multiply the leading parts of those factors. So we have 1 over 147 times x cubed times an x squared times an x which would just be 1 over 147 x to the 6th power. We have a degree 6 and a positive coefficient. In that previous lesson, we had talked about in behavior and how it would change based off the degree, if it was even or odd, and if the leading coefficient was positive or negative. Now, even degrees look like quadratic functions as far as the end behavior goes, because quadratics are an even degree, degree two. When a quadratic has a positive coefficient, we're pointing up, up. So our end behavior is up, up. This is the in, or informal way of describing this. The actual formal way, if you were asked to describe the end behavior, would be as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to 
positive infinity because it's going up. And as x goes to positive infinity to the right, y is still going up to positive infinity. <clears throat> One thing that I like to do to help make this a little bit easier for me is just to write up, up in the corner so that I know what direction I should be going. We can also start plotting some of those points. So we know that x equals 1 was one of them. x equals 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 right here. And x equals negative 3. If we want to write a little reminder, we can also say that multiplicity of 3 is going to make it wiggle. The multiplicity of 2 is going to make it bounce. The multiplicity of 1 just goes straight through. So we want to take this also through the y-intercept at 0, negative 1, and put that little point there. Those are the only points we know, which are not a lot, but it is enough based off the multiplicities and the end behavior. So I know that it should be coming from the positive up direction. So I'm going to start going that way and work towards that x-intercept. So our polynomial would be pointing up, but as we approach negative 3, we're going to go through the x-axis. We're not bouncing off the x-axis and we're not wiggling. It was a multiplicity of 1, so it's just going to go straight through. And at some point, we're going to need to turn because I need to go through this y-intercept. So I have no idea where exactly it turns, but it's going to turn at some point and go up through the y-intercept and wiggle through that point, that x-intercept at 1. Now that wiggle should look like a little cubic behavior. And at some point we got to turn back down so that we can go back through the x-intercept at 7. I'm going to go back down and bounce off the axis and go back up. For these, we have no idea how far down and up these uh, relative max and mins go. We would need calculus or a graphing tool to actually figure out those max and mins. But for now, we're just kind of sketching given that rough sketch. We can see the end behavior. We can see the behavior of the roots and where the y-intercept is. So this next graph here, we'll start again with identifying the roots of it. And if I ever call these zeros, those are the same thing. They're also x-intercepts because I can find them nicely on the x-axis. So x plus 2 equals 0 gives me an x-intercept at negative 2. It is multiplicity 2 because it was squared. And x minus 4 equals 0 has a root at 4. Its multiplicity is just 1. Our y-intercept, if I find f of 0, in this case p of 0, I'd have 1 half, sorry, negative 1 half, 0 plus 2 squared and 0 minus 4. We can still do that in our head if we want to, but we don't have to. We've got negative 1 half and then 0 plus 2 squared and 0 minus 4. Our y-intercept is 8, so we have a point at 0, 8. The end behavior is based off our leading coefficients and our degree. If I think about multiplying that all the way out, we have a leading coefficient here in the very beginning, or a scale factor of negative one half, and we're multiplying an x plus two squared, so that would make an x squared times an x, which is negative one half x cubed. We have an odd degree with a negative coefficient. An odd, or sorry, an odd function, an odd degree function, is like a cubic function. 
if we remember back to those cubics, we had things that looked like this. That was our x cubed graph. But that x cubed has a positive coefficient. When we were looking with negative x cubed, it flipped it down. So we went up on the left and down on the right. So our end behavior should be up, down. Now formally, that would say as x goes to the left, which is negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity, the going up. As x goes to the right, towards positive infinity, y goes down to negative infinity. All right, so let's plug in or plot some of these points. We've got a x-intercept at negative 2, an x-intercept at positive 4. We have a y-intercept at 8. We know that it's going to bounce off the x-axis at negative 2. But it goes straight through. I'll write that out too. Goes straight through positive 4. This is just to help give me a reminder of what's going on, what direction I need to go. We're going up on the left and down on the right this time. So the overall graph is going to come from this positive direction and go towards the x-intercept at neg or negative 2. And we're going to bounce off the x-axis. We're going to go through the y-intercept of 0, 8. At some point we need to turn, I'm not sure where, but at some point we're going to turn and go straight through the x-axis at 4. This is up-down behavior. We can see the bounce with the multiplicity. We even found the y-intercept. So this is a rough sketch, but generally a good sketch of this. If we wanted more exact points, we could make a table and plug some inputs and outputs and get more points on the graph.